welcome back to next lecture of thermal engineering today we will discuss the from the first module the super saturated flow in steam nozzles in steam nozzles the flow we assume it as isentropic now in this hs diagram shown here you can see that a flow is taking place isentropically from from point 1 through a b and at 3 it uh, stops okay so the flow from 1 to 3 is considered isentropic because the entropy remains constant throughout this flow but in actual practice this is not the case just because of the fact that at point a onwards the condensation of the steam will take place the steam will convert back to the liquid start convert back to the liquid state so that condensation process we have to consider and that is not considered in the isentropic flow now when superheated steam flows through a nozzle and expands up to the back pressure the back pressure is the pressure where uh, the ambient pressure condition at the exit of the nozzle that is the back pressure such that exit state of steam lies in the wet region that is the exit state is uh, the point 3 is in the wet wet region then during expansion steam vapors expand isentropic and slowly get condensed up to the exit state thus it is obvious that expansion of steam is accompanied by simultaneous state change from superheated state to wet state so we can uh, say from the this graph that it will change from the superheated state to the wet state so it is now superheated steam undergoes continuous change in state and become dry saturated steam at a state a and subsequently wet steam leaving steam nozzle at a state 3 this is what happens in the in the above case sometimes expansion of steam occurs in metastable equilibrium or in equilibrium in which change of steam state could not maintain its pace with expanding steam this is the reason why we call the 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 flow is metastable now the just because of the fact that as the steam flow progresses in the uh, steam nozzle especially at the end of the steam nozzle a uh, steam nozzle flow the velocity of the steam will be very high so the fluid cannot maintain its pace with expanding the, the condensation of the fluid cannot maintain its pace with the expansion of steam the condensation will be uh, will happen just after the the temperature of the saturation this phenomenon in which change of steam state could not occur simultaneously with the expanding steam in nozzle is called the phenomenon of supersaturation and the flow is called supersaturated flow or meta stable flow in supersaturated flow the condensation of steam lags behind the expansion and so steam does not condense at the saturation temperature corresponding to the pressure when superheated steam or the dry saturated steam is expanded from high pressure to low pressure exactly at point a the phase transformation should occur from superheated to wet region at point a the superheated from the superheated condition when it reaches the point a the condensation should happen but in actual practice the phase transformation will take place 
few milliseconds at the point B. So in actual practice it happens only at a point B just because the fluid velocity is very high and it passes the saturation temperature quickly. So at that time the phase change won't happen at the same pace of the velocity of the fluid. That's why there is a the condensation will happen at a lower temperature than the actual saturation temperature corresponding to the pressure. Now uh, since the condensation happens actually happens at point B now this point corresponds to the superheated state at a 1. Now if I shift if the 1 is located over here suppose the 1 is located at a different point and the same process happens we get another point B1 and if it happens uh, if the one is shifted to another location and when the steam expands from that location we get point 3 if, I, if we draw the verticals we get point B3 X, B4 B5 and if we join those points the loci, loci of the points to which which metastable equilibrium is observed is called the Wilson line. This curve passing through the, the metastable equilibrium points is called the Wilson line. So this is the theoretical saturation line. Now the actual saturation line will be below the theoretical saturation line. So, so this is called the Wilson line. And the steam start condensing at a lower temperature than the actual condensation temperature. Here the actual condensation temperature will be over here A but it starts condensing at point B which is which corresponds to a different condens different temperature which is lower than the temperature at point A. Connected to supersaturated flow, there are two terms we need to consider and the first term is degree of undercooling or the degree of subcooling. Now it is defined as the temperature difference between the saturation temperature and the actual temperature. <coughs> so here you can see the actual temperature we take it as T2 and the T2 dash is the saturation exit temperature that we take from the steam table corresponding to the actual exit pressure P2. T2 dash we get for, for the actual exit pressure P2. So this will be different. Also at T2 dash only the steam condenses. So the difference between these two we get the we get the degree of undercooling. So T2 dash is the theoretically if we say the steam condenses at A then it will be at a T2 dash but the steam condenses at a B then that temperature V is the T2. So there is a difference between that that is T2 dash is less than uh, greater than T2. Now next uh, uh, term is the degree of supersaturation. It is defined as the ratio of actual exit pressure to the saturation exit pressure. Degree of supersaturation is P2 divided by P1. Just like the temperature there are two pressure values we get. Then uh, how we will find the P2 dash value that is the saturation exit pressure. Saturation exit pressure the fine corresponding to T2 corresponding to T2 we get a pressure value that is the saturation exit pressure we take then the ratio of P2 divided by P2 dash is the degree of supersaturation. 